Europe today, European Central Bank cutting interest rates, quantitative yep. easing, weakening their, their euro. We did all this five, seven years ago. But now you don't like it when Europe's doing it. No, it's a loser. It's, it's a loser to me. Okay. It, it's a it's a historic day, and it's not like we landed on the moon. But it's historic <laughs> in the sense that Europe is joining the party of monetary easing aggressively. It's the financial bazooka, if you will. They're making rates negative, interest rates. So the banks are encouraged to lend money. You can create demand. No, you can't create demand. You can just make money cheap, and people have to go out there and say it's cheap and I want it. Uh, it's not happening. Things are deflationary in commodity prices right now. Um, they're doing a quantitative e uh, easing. They're doing an asset purchase. It was a financial bazooka. Europe is considered a, a lot more conservative bankers, but yeah, they're copying us at this point in time. Desperate times call for it. Uh, world growth is anemic, and there's not a lot of inflation. Uh, we need to see commodity prices spike up to uh, kind of get off this monetary easing. Or governments could start being fiscally responsible and come out with some ideas on how to get people to spend. Okay, in the meantime, though, probably will we see the euro get cheaper again against the dollar? Expected very slowly back half okay. of this year. Okay. All right, all of us bought forever stamps, and we thought we were geniuses, right? So the cost of stamps would keep going up. Well, big changes coming here. Maybe. Co maybe going yeah. down yeah, two this cents? Is, this is kind of goofy. Okay. For the first time in nearly a century, last time prices of stamps went down was 1919. Um, but it's expected that the cut, there was an increase a couple years ago. They're supposed to take it back because it was a temporary increase. They wanted to collect $4.6 billion. They've done it. The, the date for that collection fee is over April 10th. So the post office is saying, no, please, 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 United States government, don't take this away from us. Leave the two cents in. Letters will are 49 cents, but they should become 47. International are a buck 20 uh, to send. They should become a buck 15. Postcards are 35 cents. They should become 34. Um, but again, this all depends on do, do, do the U, United States Post Office get their way, or I, I just don't see a congressman oh, okay. saying, you know, lower the price of stamps, right? You know, c Congress, they're not going to. I, I don't think Congress jumps in. Okay. I think ultimately we do see lower costs, uh, but it is a goofy situation because. The post office is kind of monitored and regulated by the United States government, but they're not funded by the United States government. So I don't, I don't like that. No, I don't it's, like a that. it's a terrible system. Yeah, it's a quasi government Especially because the government's making the post office pre-fund the pensions for all their employees. So uh, the reason the post office is in such debt is because of congressional rules, not because of how they operate. I would like them to become independent yeah. and, and turn a profit as much as they can. That would be very nice for all of us. And uh, then we've got the soda industry, and we're seeing you yes. know new pushes for taxes on sugary drinks. It's amazing how much less soda Americans are drinking. We can tax anything that's sin-oriented, okay. um, cigarettes, sex, alcohol, and we could actually tax um, soda as well. But you're, you bring that up because here we are raising taxes on soda, or trying to, and yet consumption's going down aggressively. In the last 15 years per capita, 53 gallons per capita wow. is now down to 41 gallons per capita in the United States. That's about 20% shaved off. And again, that continues to drop. If you go into a business meeting now with a Diet Coke, it's almost like going into a business meeting with a pack of cigarettes. It's just frowned upon. Um, so it, it's an interesting that they're raising taxes there because demand's going down already. It's amazing that the average American is 41 gallons of sugary drinks and sodas a year. All right, we have a question from Bill, and Bill's asking, Rob, what company should I use for life insurance? I'm going to talk about me and not necessarily everyone else. I don't want to like, <laughs> impose this, but I use companies like Geico and USAA that have an automated kind of component to it and not a salesperson. Um, it ultimately has a business model that leads to cheaper costs, whether it's for your home, whether it's for your auto, whether it's for your life insurance. I don't like the insurance salesperson. I know a lot of people in our crowds are groaning right now, but that middleman, he has to make a dollar and he ultimately makes it off you, the consumer, and the corporation makes a dollar. I'd prefer to go to USAA or Geico, who are considered two of the best. And I get all the policies, multi-policies that you can because it lowers your cost. Oh, thank you, Rob, and thank you both for the question. If you have a question for Rob, post on this Facebook page, and we'll try and answer it on the air here on Crom 4. They say business is about who you